Okay, hello. Um, as you can tell by the background, this is a Lishy video. Um, what I'm talking about in this video really is for the people who don't know much about them, but want, might want to buy some because they see a lot of people buying them at the moment and talking about them. I'm just going to go over and talk about what they can and can't do and when's a good idea to use them and when's a good idea not to. Um, just to give you an idea and then you can see if these sort of things are for you. In front of me here on this little strip are lishies that are useful in the UK, um, at least to me. We've got this first section from here to here is all about Yale. Um, there's a couple of duplicates there. Here we have Quickset, which is an American style lock, but we do have them here in the UK in ERA use them in knob sets and things like that. Here we have SC4 and SC1. The only difference between these two is a six pin and a five pin. These are for slage locks. Again, we do have these. We find these in shop doors and things like that. AM5, um, this is for American locks owned by Master. Here in the UK, we find locks like this from Federal. They use this keyway. Um, also, along with the puck locks we find on bands, Master Lock branded, everything like that. They also use this keyway and it's very useful for those. Also, um, next to that, we have a master one for the master padlocks. We know they're only four pins, so we don't need the Lishy to pick them really, although it will do it. However, once it is picked, we can use the pick to decode and make a key for the lock afterwards as they are uh, not rekeyable. So we can't take the locks apart to make a key for them. So that's the best way to do that. Right. The main topic here is the Yale ones that people are questioning and, and they want to know about. What are they good for? Um, what are they not good for? Um, first of all, straight off the bat, we'll say they're designed for Yale. They shouldn't pick anything else. You shouldn't expect them to pick anything else. They're for Yale. So I have a lot of people messaging me getting frustrated saying it doesn't fit this lock or it won't lift the pins up in this lock. It's not a Yale. It's designed for Yale. However, it will pick an extraordinary amount of other locks as Yale shares its profile and variants of it with many other locks. Also, the pin spacing is pretty much the same throughout a lot of different locks as well. So they work in many locks. But if it doesn't work in a certain lock that you were expecting it to, forget about it. It wasn't designed for it. Unless that's a Yale, um, then I know it's struggling with some of the newer Yales at the moment. Um, the Yales, I don't have any, but the Yales with the little slot just there under the core, it's having issues with those in the moment. It can't reach pin six at the back. So right off the bat, the new Yales, it cannot pick them. So bear that in mind. Um, locks like this, ERA six pins, perfect for it. No problems whatsoever with that. Um, five pin Yales, absolutely loves those or eras. It's what it's for. It's where it's going to work the best. Um, the picks that you would need if you want to purchase them, there are four main ones. That's these. You may see them sold as a set of four. I'll explain the reasons why. Um, from right to left, we have 6B, 6, 5B, 5. Now, these are in two groups like this. Six pinners, five pinners. The B, in my eyes, means bottom. So you may see that the uh, actual picking tips are facing each other at the moment. So this would be in the lock, pins at the bottom. And then the five would be in the lock, pins at the top. So that's like your rim cylinder or so like that. Same for the six ones, uh, bottom. Euro cylinders with the pins facing down, very useful. Occasionally, Euro cylinders mounted upside down, or we have six pin rim cylinders, so that's useful for that. Um, it's not just about top and bottom pins, why that's useful or necessary. Um, I've set up a little rig here, which to just demonstrate really quickly why we would need the four different picks, essentially. If you're a hobbyist, then no. Just go for 1.6B and 1.5B or something like that. It's all you need for pressing pins down on the bench. 
So if you're a locksmith and you want to use them in the real world, then I do suggest you get the set of four. Um, so the reasons why I set this up with the lock upside down here, just so it works with the camera a little bit better. But if we imagine this is in a door and we have a wall here next to it or a very large door frame that the door closes into. And in the UK, our doors open inwards into the property. So there's always something here like a door jam or something that gets in the way. Um, so our main issue for that, if we take the Yale 5 and we were to enter it in the lock, in this case, it's upside down, like I say for the video, but it could be that this is on the left side of the door giving the same issue. And we put it into the lock, we see the problem. This wall might be extended or however, we, we cannot see this chart. We can't get our head on that side. The arm tension arms over here as well. It's just not usable. It becomes 10 times harder now to pick this lock. This was always an issue with these lishies and um, we can address that now by having two different types, top and bottom. So that's the five and we'll now switch that out for the five B. Straight away, we've got the chart on our side now, albeit the chart would be upside down in, in that case, if you've uh, switched its size, but we know we can see where it is the fact that the chart would be upside down, it wouldn't make any difference to us. We could still get the lock picked. So having two of each of that type of pick, top and bottom, is very, very useful. Okay. Um, a limitation of these picks um, noted by many people is that you can only really use them in one direction. So that would be clockwise for the Yale profile. The reason being for that would be this groove here where... The warding enters in this one here. If we tension anti-clockwise, that warding gets uh, gets gets pressed into the tool there, and this is exactly where our pick slides through. So it starts to get jammed up, and we can't move the pick through the lock very nicely if we're tensioning that way. Um, there are some exceptions. These era five pins I've noticed is one of them. There's likely many more, but this is where I've noticed it. So first of all, you would enter the pick into the lock. Before we apply any tension on there, we just see that we can move through the lock, we do. Now we can apply a bit of tension. So let's say we go anti-clockwise for this one. And just check, it still moves freely through there back into above the pins. So we know that we would be able to pick this lock in the anti-clockwise direction, like that just as we would do in the clockwise direction, okay? In other locks, you'd press down there in the anti-clockwise and this would be rock solid. You wouldn't be able to move it back into, that's not a lock that could be picked in the clock uh, anti-clockwise direction. So you'd go the other way and then check if it could move that side. If it does, fantastic. We can pick the lock. If this was the door setup we have now, we would pick the lock in the wrong direction. The tool can be removed while the lock is picked always and then we could plug spin the lock the other way. So these coupled with a plug spinner would be a great idea. Right, um, another quick limitation that I've come across. Here we have a thumb turn lock. So they're great for a thumb turn lock. How many pins is this? Six. So we would take our 6B pick we would enter that into the lock. Oop, which doesn't want to fit for some reason. I, don't know. Um, I will pick up the other one. Okay. 6B into the lock. And we can pick this without even really thinking about it. This is a training lock I have, so there's only two pins in here. I'll just pick that quickly. Okay, big false set and deal with the spool. So as you, brilliant. As we see now, we have this lock picked, but, oh, actually, there we go. <laughs> we'll do that again. So our desired open direction is actually, um, for this particular lock would be anti-clockwise, but let's pretend we can't do that. So I'll pick it once more, pin one, and then the spool on two. There we go. So. We pick this the wrong way because that's the way we can pick it. Now, usually we say it's not a problem for a thumb turn. We just pull the tool out like so, and then 
we can twist this pick round now and then collect the thumb turn from the other side and open the lock. However, because we had the pick fully inserted when we picked the lock in the first place, we've actually turned that thumb turn a little bit the wrong way. So now it's really difficult, if not impossible, to be able to pick that thumb turner up because we've turned it the opposite way. So unless we've got a certain lock where we can press in and, and rotate and rotate and rotate to get that thumb turn moved back to at least the 12 o'clock position or a bit further, as you see with this era, it's not doing that. So we, we can't really manage to pick this thumb turn in the, by picking it clockwise first and then and then coming the other way. So unless we've got a thumb turn where we can pick it in the other direction, because this is an era, we can. A bit, a bit harder with the uh, kind of rotation here when we're going in that direction, but we have been able to pick it now that way and we can open the lock. So limitation there, um, not a big one, but one to look out for if it's a thumb turn. Typically, we can bypass thumb turns and uh, do what you know most locksmiths would do anyway. But if you want to use these lishes, just keep your eye out. Poke a stick in the back of the lock first to see if it's a thumb turn or not before you begin picking this in the uh, wrong direction, thinking that you'd be able to get it back the other way. So that's a quick limitation. Uh, what else have we got? Okay. Um, the, as far as picking the actual locks goes, some people are having trouble um, in just sort of the way it works. So I'll, uh, I'll pick this little rim cylinder here just to give an example of how I'm going about it. This is a five pin lock. So let's see if I can just move this lighting a little bit and give us a bit of a better view. Or we can rotate the vise. because we want to see the chart a bit better. Okay, tighten it up there. Ooh, excuse me. Okay, brilliant, that'll do. So we're going to go in the clockwise direction as it's the easiest. We apply the tension on, make sure that we can move through the lock. This is your procedure for every lock that you come up to with these picks. Check that it moves through the lock. If it does, then we can check the pin chambers and we can move up through those, that's fine. So with tension on now, we're going to go underneath each pin and test. You need not very much tension on over here. If you've got the more too much tension on over here, it's gonna take more force to lift this up. And this is a very thin bit of metal, it will bend. So you need to be careful of that. So with sort of a, a medium pressure on your tension, Go along and feel underneath each pin. And you're looking to see, is it springy or is it solid? So our number one is springing. So we leave him alone. Try number two, solid. So what we're aiming to do is to get this tiny one millimeter amount of spring back. If we do that, then we have got the pin set. As is at the moment, it's solid. So we'll give him a lift. Okay, we got a click and we check but it's not giving that one millimeter spring back. So we'll keep lifting. Okay, you've got another click. And there we go, we've got that spring back there. Great, now we can move on. Check one again, because we've changed something about the lock now. One may have changed, he hasn't, he's still springy. Try three, springy. Four is springy, that means indeed five is binding. So we'll do the same as we did for pin two. Okay, we've got a click out of him and we got that one millimeter spring back there. We heard other clicks, which means we could have dropped two and we have, so we'll send him back. There we go, to where he was. And now he's springing and five still springing. So we got two pins picked. Four is now solid, so we'll give him a click. There we go. And now he's springing that one millimeter. Three is solid now get the click and get that one millimeter bit of springiness. Two still springy. That would suggest that only pin one to go 
It's not. We got a spring out of him. He's set where he needs to be. Who's who's left? Three. It's four. No, not four. It's five. <laughs> there we go. So, as you can see, principles to, th to follow there. Get a click first. Feel that one millimeter bit of springiness and that pin is set. Move on to the next one. While setting other pins, you may drop the ones that you've already set. So always after setting a pin and checking it springy, come back and check the ones you already set to make sure they're still where they were. Follow this procedure all the way through until the lock opens. Occasionally you can overset a pin where you heard the click, but it's just not springy anymore. And then if you try and push them up further, it just binds and does nothing. In that case, you have to relax your tension and listen for clicks. Sometimes you can leave your wire underneath the pin as you release the tension and, and you'll see it pop back down, which suggests that your pin you're working on has been reset. Okay, so that's about it really. Um, we all know that we can open these locks anyway before these tools came out and uh, don't rely on these tools. I would suggest get proficient with your hand picking and then move to these tools. If you learn to use these tools first and then rely on them, you're gonna come across a lock then that they don't fit in or it just doesn't work with and you won't be able to pick that lock then because you haven't learned how to do these by hand first. They're not a magic bullet like they're appearing to be on many videos and social media and things like that, but they have their uses for sure. If you've been picking locks for a long time, it's also like for myself, it's advantageous um, to use these because we we can pick up thumb turns and it's fun as well. Um, there's one more thing that I would need to touch on and that would be, I had it set to the side here. I know the video is long, but this is important to know. This will prevent you from breaking picks accidentally. This core is from a Yale rim cylinder and this is not the case with all of these Yales, it will pick them fine. Um, but in some of them, you will find it just won't lift a pin. And there's a reason for that. It's been pointed out by other people as well, but I'm gonna try and show it you here. Um, if we rotate this around here, we've got our pins. The pick that is for this would be, this is a five pinner, so we'll go for the Yale five, enter it into the lock. Move the pick tip out of the way, there we go. So that's fully in the lock here. And I'm gonna hold this steady as we go through these pins. And we're gonna realize, there goes pin one, no problems. But pin two, I'm not, well, obviously I'm not tensioning the lock, it's not in a lock. We can't press two, three, no problem, four, five. Our pin two is giving us an issue. Now, this is a, caused by a block, not an intentional one to prevent picking, but always where the, a really short pin is to stop the pin dropping too far into the keyway. Um, these picks, you may have seen the black ones, these don't have that angle that makes these picks so good. Now, because of that, it's uh, this pick, once we get it in the lock, there we go. This pick will actually pick these locks. So there's pin one, here's pin two, no problem, lifts it. So it's that angle on the new one that's caused that. And it's a trade off really. I will carry these old ones as well in case that ever happens. And remember we're talking about trying to pick this lock the difficult way with these rather than the usual method. So I'm never really gonna have to use this, but carry it anyway if one doesn't work another one might um right we'll show you why that is happening i'm going to dump out the first three pins in this lock so we can contrast and compare okay so we can straight away see the difference in that middle pin chamber there um i've got a pick here just to point at it so on this far side here in the hole this is clear and this has a step. The pick hits it there. And this one is clear. So it's our picking tip on these that is angled to one side. 
it's hitting that ledge in there. So we see it moving up there, pin chamber one, pin chamber two, it cannot get past, and there's three on the other side. Two, it can't come up past that ledge. This ledge, like I say, is to hold the pin and stop it from going too far into the lock. We have the black, the black one here. We started at pin one. It moves up into pin one in the middle of the chamber, not to one side. And pin two, it manages to make it past that wall. So it has limitations. We will notice this when we come to put the pick in and, and we can't press it down. Don't think it's a binding pin and try and force it, you will break your pick. So knowing about it is half of the problem uh, solved, should I say. So just don't, don't try and force these tools. They are very delicate. You will break them if you try and force them. It's for a delicate operation. If you feel you're putting too much pressure on your picking tip, go light on it. And that's it. That's a very long video. Sorry about that, but hopefully it's very informational for some of you. Any other questions you have about these that I've not gone over, uh, give me a, a comment in the video below and I will answer it for you. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.